Hello and welcome. Tonight we're going to do a short painting video um, on how to use contrast paints uh, to paint one of these fantastic um, Vatican Guard from TT Combat's Carnivale. It's a new faction for me. We've been videoing a number of battle reports over the last few months and uh, me and Charlie decided we'd spread out and, and try and collect a couple of different factions and make the games more interesting. Uh, so obviously I'm keen to get these painted and get them on the table as quick as I can. With that in mind, <coughs> I've decided to do a contrast paint uh, scheme with them. Um, I'll do a layer of contrast paints uh, and then I'll highlight these up a little bit and try and clean them up. Uh, contrast paints, uh, there's been loads of debate about how good these are. Personally, I think they're, they're pretty useful. Uh, they're not the be all and end all of painting. Whilst this uh, model of paint already is um, pretty much tabletop ready, it'll be fine from across the table. Um, it's not quite a style I like, and I do like to do a bit more highlighting, more shading, a bit more depth to my models. I certainly do like my metallics, um, and I'm not very fond of this whole painting things black and just letting it be a bit grey. Um, so I want to make metallics uh, a little bit different. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get it to this sort of stage. Uh, I've got another of these um, guards to paint up. Uh, for anyone who's watching who knows um, TT Combat's game, I've actually swapped out the heads on these. I wasn't a massive fan of the bald heads the models had in the first place, so I've swapped them out for some medieval um, knight heads, uh, which I got from Perry or or, or someone like that, whoever does uh, medieval knights. I think it's um, one of the Perry box sets off the top of my head. So, that's an example of one I did earlier. I have a fresh one here. Also got a number of paints I'm going to use, so I'm keeping my paint scheme pretty simple. Uh, we've got Apothecary White, we've got Iandan Yellow, we've got Gun and Flesh for the Flesh, we've got Black Templar, um, which is taking me a little while to get a hold of this. Um, I don't think there's any on this, but if there's any kind of parchment things, there's Skeleton Horde. And on some of the other models, I've thrown a little bit of uh, Flesh Terror Red, but again, I don't think I need any for this one. So it's probably going to be just these four core colours. I'm going to try and get them down as quickly as I can. So one of the great things I found about contrast is it, it is a paint system in a tin to an extent. However, I've, I'm treating it much more like a single uh, single layer and a wash. Um, and I found treating it like that means um, it's actually kind of just speeds your painting up a little bit. I'm a relatively quick painter anyway, but um, doing this is just a little bit faster again. Um, saves me essentially a base coat and a, and a wash, a little bit of drying time. Um, and just makes the uh, batch painting bigger the blocks of figures a little bit quicker. Uh, and tonight I'm just painting this one guy. Uh, I've already painted the rest of the, the um, faction up for me. Uh, so I'm just can't really, I've batch painted those earlier, but I wanted to do a video of this guy, so I'm going to probably have to just stop and start this video while I wait for various layers to dry. <coughs> so contrast is, um, excuse me, I'm full of cough at the minute. Um, Contrast paint goes on really nice and thickly. Um, it'll shade really naturally. It just literally sits on it. These have been um, they've been undercoated in uh, wraith bone. Uh, I like it as a, a undercoat more than the grey sear spray. I find the grey sear one brings out the colours a little too cold for what I want to do. And wraith bone, however, it keeps a little bit of warmth in it, warmth in them and gives a nice effect. Um, again, multiple uses of, of contrast. Contrast are fabulous paints, but I would say they really need to be doing, you're looking at doing really bright colours, so they don't work particularly well if you want to do drab colours. Um, they stand out better. It's a, it's a, it's a GW's range, so it's, a, it's all really nice, bright, strong tones. Um, I saw someone doing a World War II miniatures the other day, and they just all came out kind of brown and drabby. Um, and I don't think it works particularly well for that. They do a lot of mixing of greens and browns. Um, and I just don't think contrast is really made for that. There's other ways of painting those sorts of figures using dips and um, other techniques like that. Now, because I'm going to be contrast painting this guy, I'll likely, I'll likely after that um, give it a varnish. And do the metals, deepen up some of the colours, and then I'll highlight most of the colours. I don't need to be particularly careful. 
And I'm just going to try and get the paint on as quick as I can. Whilst keeping the camera in the right place and the model in the right place. It's all a bit new to me, this. Um, brush wise, I'm using quite a small brush. This is a small layer brush from GW. Um, I've used much bigger brushes before and found them to be perfectly adequate. Really, it's about your tip. The tip is just about going on this one, unfortunately. Uh, but it seems to be doing the job just about. Just try and push the paint right up to each model, each um, each model, each layer. So all the cloak on this one's being yellow. So push it right up to the edge of the leg. Get that slightly dark bit um, shaded in there, just like this. Nice dark line here. Just keep pushing the paint in, working it in. Um, you'll see I turn my models quite a lot. I was uh, chatting to a buddy of mine earlier about doing these videos and um, I don't have a paint handle, I don't generally like them. Um, I kind of like to handle my model a lot. Uh, I do hold my models by the base mostly and I have found, as I do often, sort of handle the model as well as I tip them over and touch the head. Contrast paint rubs off a little bit so try and handle the model as little as possible. Try and hold something like the base or, or get a paint handle and, and turn them round um, as you're painting. Just try and get the paint all in as deep as you can. I've already broken my first usual practice of uh, contrast because I wanted to paint the yellow cloak. I normally try and work from lightest colour to darkest colour. Um, yeah, you, it's quite easy to paint darker colours over lighter ones. So if you splash this onto one of the areas that's going to be black, it's not going to make a slightest bit of difference. But if you do it the other way around, it's very hard to go over dark colours without um, getting the contrast undercoat matching paint again and, and doing a little work on it. So that's the yellow done. I'm going to do the brown boots and I think I'm going to have to leave him to dry a little bit after that and, and come back in a few minutes. Um, we've got the, uh, the white cloth on the legs, all the centre, all the metals will be black. Uh, stock of the, um, the halberd will be uh, wildwood, which I didn't show you before, I just realised it's sat over here. Contrast wildwood. Really nice colour for leathers and um, leathers and woods and things like that. Um, belt will be contrast as well. A little bit of glue and flesh around the face and the hands. And that's basically it. It's a really quick paint job, this one. So I'm just going to swap over to Wildwood. And I'll do the boots and the belt. And then we'll let this guy settle and dry for a little while. And I'll come back after that. Always give you paints a quick shake. Make sure they're nicely mixed up. I have found um, over the years that certain paints, um, when they settle, um, certain brands of paints can go a bit shiny. Um, Army Painter is one that comes to mind. Uh, I've had all sorts of problems with uh, paints um, settling over time and then when you paint them without a proper shake, uh, you get a kind of shiny layer on them. Uh, with contrast paint, I usually just paint following the contours, make sure all the paint gets nice and deeply in. Um, I'm not worrying too much about the bases, I'm going to overpaint those later um, to match my uh, the boards I have for Carnivale, which to be fair are kind of creamy white anyway, but I'll, uh, I'll just sort it all out in the end, so I'm not worrying too much about splashing on the base. Um, on there, it's looking pretty good. Handily, it's not, um, the colours aren't mixing up together too badly there. No, it's meeting the cloak. And that's one of the downsides of uh, the contrast is the, the paints do take a little while to dry. And so if you're trying to paint in a hurry like I am, you find you kind of keep catching yourself on earlier colours. Okay, so we're nearly done there. Fish around the tip of his boot. And all the way back up here. Yeah, that's, those are looking pretty cool. But we've got a little bit of bleeding, see there, a little bit of bleed in the yellows, just starting to bleed out a little bit. But as I say, I'm going to overpaint these anyway, so 
it's not going to matter too much and to be fair from four foot away as you usually see models you'll never notice uh, a tiny little bit of bleeding under there anyway uh, i'm just going to try and do his belt very very quickly i just need to wash my brush and get a bit more tip on it unfortunately because they're such wet paints they do tend to splay brushes a little bit which isn't ideal you can actually see what I'm doing here. Yeah, yeah. Just about one right across here, and I'll paint out the um, the straps and things later because this I'm going to go over this in black. Just a little hole up here. <clears throat> this is where contrast can be a little hard. You, you don't want to get the paint anywhere else. But when you're painting a model that's um, got bits of uh, different layers and, and hard to get to areas, do a little bit of a paint to paint in them. And also, because of the technique of contrast, it wants to settle in the gaps. I don't really like doing sub assemblies, painting models when they're only half built. Just don't find it works for it. Um, normally, if I'm painting, I work over a black base. So when there's like, a little hard to get bits like that I just don't paint them you know, it's been my technique for years and, and has worked for them really well and I've got you know, hundreds and hundreds of painted figures like that um, and I don't think anyone's ever commented that I've uh, I've not painted a tiny bit in the, in the back so that's it for now I'll be back in a little while once this is dried off and we'll do some white and uh, we'll do the black and the other colors too thank you for the moment right we're back again the uh, this guy's dried off nicely now, and so I'm going to do some more colours on him. I'm going to start with uh, this pot of blood and flesh I've already bothered to open. And we're just going to do around his chin very quickly. A bit of colour under there. Like that. And on this side. And I'm also going to do his hands here. I think the flesh colours is one of the main reasons contrasts are such a great paint range. Uh, I really do need to pick up some of the other colours for their fleshes. Um, I do find when I'm painting normally, I have a really bad habit of, of just doing the usual, the usual go-to kind of colour combinations for skin. Um, I also quite generally tend to shade my skin quite darkly when I'm painting the kind of more traditional layer method. I think with your contrast, it's a really good opportunity to start throwing some extra colours in, do different skin tones, stuff like that. So I really must pick up the, uh, I think there's the other two, isn't there? Top of my head. Um, pick up the other ones and, and get uh, some of them tried out and try and learn a few more techniques for doing different skin tones and um, kind of putting different textures into the skin a little bit, some blues, greens, things like that. Right, so that's the flesh done for now. I'm going to do white next now the white is going to be legs uh sleeves here i'm also going to go back as i've forgotten and do the shaft of his weapon in contrast and then it's really just going to be the black to do it's a really nice quick easy model this one is so white is uh, is apothecary white it was one of the hardest ones to get hold of when the range was first released um Following some of the various other groups, I think it was well loved by Star Wars Legion uh, players. Um, and they just uh, painting stormtroopers possibly the easiest job on this earth. And you can start to see now why I like to do lighter colours first and darker colours because this has already started to overstain the nice dark line I had between the brown there. So I did in the uh, against the yellow here. It's sat in that gap there. I think it looks a lot better if you do the lightest colours first and essentially overstain layers with darker ones, which means you get the darkest colour sitting in that uh, crack. It's not a massive problem with these figures. I'm probably going to go around and with a very fine brush and just drop a little bit of um, I've been to strong tone in there at a later date. Now he's got a fortunately tiny, tiny little sleeve up here. Try and drag a little bit of paint up there. 
shading there and the same on this side there's literally about five millimeters of sleeve in there it's a little frustrating there we go and uh, so I'll do the shaft the weapon as well on the so that is wildwood uh, templar uh, that logo. I've managed to lose my wildwood paint entirely from flesh contrast quite hard uh, oh, wood. There it is. Over there. Oh, I lost my brush almost went very wrong this over here too This wildwood paint is absolutely fabulous. It's such a nice, rich brown. Settles really nice. It's probably one of my favourite ones. The yellow, it's a bit too orange for my tastes. I normally start most of my yellows from a, a brown colour uh, rather than going with a, a really bright yellow. So this is a, a bit unusual for me doing it this way. Well, we'll see how they come out when I finish uh, painting and highlighting the main bit of the model. Just gonna drop a little bit of brown over there, try and darken that up because I don't like that grey line there. Let's try and hide that a little bit. That's better. Okay, I'm gonna wait for that to dry. Because the uh, the white is touching the other colours and um, like the black's around here. I think it's best if I wait for it to dry a little bit. Let's try and clean it out a little bit. Just down there. And on this side. Pull out some of the paint a little bit. Make it look easier so that later. But yeah, because this uh, this white's touching the various areas, I'm going to paint black. So I don't get the same problem I've just had. A little bit of bleed. I'm going to leave that for a moment. Give it 10 minutes to dry and come back and finish off the black. Uh, and there you'll see the, the first part of the model. Right, I'm back for the final round of this model here. Um, just going to do uh, all the black on this. Uh, and then I'll give you a, do a quick group shot of Vatican so far. Um, they've all, all the other models have been finished, uh, all the contrast done. And then I'm going to take them outside tomorrow evening, go back from work, and give them a quick varnish. I might do that tonight so I can paint them tomorrow and do the second part of this video tomorrow. And uh, once they're varnished, I'll do the metals and start working with these colours a little bit more. Try and um, certainly clean the blacks up. I'm not overly impressed by this. Um, um, the Black Templar for I've got a couple of models with black robes and um, they've come out a bit greyer than I wanted. I don't think a second coat is going to fix it. So what I'm likely to do is I'm going to highlight it up a little bit, just a bit edge highlighting on the folds. And once I've done that, I'll get my trusty null oil out and give it a wash or two to really deepen it up. Um, that generally works a lot when I'm painting normally and I do um, overboard with the highlights and, and too much grey on things. And then these guys are going to have metal armour, metal weapon heads. Uh, the white will highlight up. I need to come grab a new pot of Uriel yellow because mine was dried out the other day. Um, I'll highlight the cloaks with a bit of Uriel yellow. And then probably add a little bit of white into that and do a second uh, second or third highlight. Got uh, straps there. All these bits that need black. I'm going to put a bit of contrast on them first. Just helps add some uh, shading lines between them. So when I put the silver on, it's not all up to whatever I washed the silver with. And hopefully means I'm reminded of what I'm supposed to be doing where. And I sort of, I say I'll, I'll say the other videos. I normally paint over a black, um, a black base coat, so it's, I find it a lot easier doing 
calls over black it means if I miss a little bit in the depths um, between shades and uh, and the black undercoat that it just vanishes entirely. Strong, isn't it? Uh, get this helmet down nice and quickly. There we go. Do love these helms. They look kind of proper, proper mean. Right, last few little bits on this guy. Done. Track four. There we go. Yeah, slap it on his axe head. You can just slap this paint on, it's wonderful. I painted, had the other, and there's two, there's two gangs in here, there's uh, two lots of five models. Uh, I painted the other nine of them um, in about two hours over a bit last night, a little bit this afternoon while my kids were playing. And I find it's really quite easy to, um, to just nudge models forward when you've got a spare hour. Um, otherwise, these would probably take me eh, a week and a half to paint normally. I think they'll probably, I think the contrast paints will probably bring that down to um, a couple of nights once I've done this and I've done the highlighting. So whilst I don't just contrast paint, it does massively speed up the amount of time it takes me to paint models. Uh, obviously we want these guys on our channel as soon as we can. We're coming near the end of our Come Forces campaigns in, in Carnivale, I think. I'm fairly sure we're close to the end. Um, we've played about six games so far through the um, Church of Dagon campaign. And um, to, to an extent, you know, it's, it's uh, me and Charlie playing against each other, so uh, we want to see some different forces on the table um, and see how they act. Better. So um, there we go, that's the first stage of uh, contrast painting this model. You know, from, oh, sorry, moving out of the way there, um, from across the table, um, that's pretty good, it's pretty neat. Um, I think that's the key with these. It would suffice there, you know, it's, um, it depends on how much effort you want to put into these things. Um, I like a bit more, I do really enjoy painting, so I'll, um, I'll keep highlighting them up. But yeah, that's one of the benefits of contrast paints. You could literally stick him on the table tomorrow and you know he's clear, he's identifiable. We've got four kind of colours there. This is the guy we've got more. On the other side done there. Add some red into the bishop. Uh, we've got the what else we've got here, Knight of Avignon again. Um I've kind of tried to key mine a little bit, so um the bishops and the priests, uh, the altar boy here. Have more blacks and whites on them. Uh, the combat characters like these, uh, like the guards, they've got more yellow. And I've got a couple of uh, monks here, uh, more black and yellow. So I've kind of just keyed them out a bit, tried to mix the colours up a little bit, um, using the same palette all the time. I've just missed a bit on that, I'll just clean that up quickly. Yeah, it. We can see here what I mean by the the black on a, on a big space, a lot of robes here, it does look a bit too grey for my liking. That's all I'm going to try and break that down and get that to be uh, more like black. In this video I'll uh, I'll probably take a group shot of all these models together and um, I'll stick it on the end when I edit the video together later. Thanks for joining us, see you um, probably next week when I uh, I do the kind of uh, metallics and highlights and stuff on these and just show you how to take your contrast painted minis um, one step further. Goodbye.